So we are on the second case. There are six cases, two women, four men. It's going down. We are on the second case and let's get out into it. If you guys want to hear all of the legal jargon from the uh, people he's suing and what was the nature and whatnot, please fast forward, please rewind right now. We are jumping right into the meat of this. Okay. They said on or around June 1995, he attended a promotional party at Elks Plaza in New York City for a music video. One more chance by Biggie Smalls. Yo, how far are these lawsuits going back? The event was packed with high profile guests. While Planet was dancing with friends, Diddy, this is for a, this is a woman. Okay. Why Diddy was dancing with friends, Diddy approached her and asked to speak with her privately, expecting an innocent conversation. She agreed and followed him. Alone in the bathroom, Diddy unexpectedly be began kissing the plaintiff. Feeling uncomfortable and confused, uh, plaintiff, she asked Diddy, like, slow down, believing they were there to talk. Instead, Diddy advanced aggressively. When the plaintiff attempted to pull away, he, oh, my God, he violently struck her, <gasps> slamming her head against the wall and causing her to fall to the floor. What the hell? Disoriented and in pain, she tried to escape, but Diddy hit her again, making it nearly impossible for her to move. He then lift he, he then lifted her blank and graped her blank while she lay helpless on the floor. She tried to resist, but her injuries and shock left her powerless. At the assault, Diddy adjusted his clothing in a nonchalant manner and threatened the plaintiff saying, you better not tell anyone about this or you will disappear. She left her terrified for her life. He left the bathroom, abandoning her in a state of shock, fear, and shame. She remained on the bathroom floor for a while, trying to regain her composure. She felt intense pain in her head from the blows and was emotionally shattered. After some time, she managed to stand, fix her blank and blank, and her dress and wipe away her tears. Terrified that someone from Combs's business might be waiting outside to harm her, she cautiously gathered up the courage to leave the bathroom. She left the party and never returned. Since the assault, she has avoided the news as it triggers traumatic memories. For years, he kept, she kept the assault a secret, fearing retaliation from Diddy and Combs's business. Yeah. Diddy needs to go to jail. Diddy needs to go to jail. So that was complaint two. It was by Jane Doe. That's the second female plaintiff that we just walked through. That is everything she's actually claiming. She's basically claiming that Diddy walked in to say, yo, can I talk to you for a second? Anyone. He is Diddy. He is rich. He is powerful. He's the person throwing the party. She's single right? She's like, yeah, what's going on? You think he's going to try to kick game to her. Instead, he asked her to step into a bathroom to talk privately. Again, some people could say, what are you doing going into the bathroom? Baby, no means no. I can go anywhere and I could be sitting there on your bed talking to you. That is not permission for you to violate me. When she tried something on her, she was disgusted by the mouth beater. And she said, oh, wait, no, slow down. He then raised his hand, struck her so bad, her head hit the wall. Then he struck her again so bad it knocked her down. While she was in pain and disoriented, he lifted and took what he wanted. And then when she left, told her if he said if she said anything to anybody, he was going to enter. She laid on the bathroom floor for a while, scared, embarrassed, ashamed, just going through a traumatic, beaten up. She finally got her courage to walk out and she left that party and never looked back. Let's get into also the third John Doe male plaintiff, the third John Doe male plaintiff uh, of the Diddy case. Okay. We're going through all of these. Tony Busby is going through all of these again. Just joining us, this is the third male accuser for Diddy. We are doing the full legal analysis. We are reading all the docs. If you want the actual, um, if you want the introduction, uh, he says the same introduction. Please rewind. He has the same introduction about what Diddy did 
uh, not what he did, but who he is. And he goes through uh, a litany of Diddy's cases and why he is probably the worst person ever. Okay, let's get into this. This is the third John Doe, the third John Doe. There are six cases filed. There are four men, two women. We have done the original John Doe, uh, who was a minor, right? Johnny Doe. Um, we have just done a woman that said that during the Biggie's One More Chance, um, it was either album or video party, Diddy did that stuff. So that's another thing. Did he, let me just pause and say this. By that second allegation, if it can be proven true, and it sounds like everything else everybody was saying about Diddy, I would think that that is the most damning thing to Diddy's internet comeback. There's a lot of people making excuses for Diddy saying he learned that somewhere. Somebody had to teach him that. But from this woman's thing and her being violently assaulted and then graped at a party and saying, yo, I'll end you if you say anything, that shows that Diddy was always on this dumb stuff. Diddy was always on this evil stuff. Nobody taught Diddy. He was born in that, in that evil. Maybe it's original sin. I don't know. But if what this woman the second lawsuit Jane Doe was saying, that destroys anybody saying, oh no, Diddy was taught. You don't think he did that on, yes, he 100% did that on his own because he is evil. But let's get into the third case, okay? 